Welcome to the second part of this two-part tutorial of how we at Lowbrow Gaming set up OBS for Let's Plays and Game Streams. So in the first part we went through uh, some of the equipment that we use, the audio and video settings, advanced settings, hotkeys, the OBS mixer, which I'm going to repeat a bit about in this video, and uh, finally we went through a little bit about how to set up scenes and layers, which we're going to really dig into deep in this video, because I have a stream tomorrow and I have to set this up. So for the sake of the tutorial, I reset everything. Uh, the first video, we set everything here up. Let's dig right into the settings, and we're going to start with audio settings once again. 48 kilohertz, still very important. No matter what you use OBS for, pick 48 kilohertz. Stereo, also very important. And here's your main audio, all your game audio and uh, computer audio and stuff. are going to go through your main speakers. Uh, I mean, this is your main output, the same output you would choose in your playback devices. There we go, default output. And uh, your microphone. And if you're doing voice chat and you want people to hear that on your stream, you also have to choose the same thing here. Uh, this is my default communications device. I'm going to choose the headset earphone and move on to video. In general, your viewers are very happy if you can do 1080p and 60 frames per second also while streaming. However, if you have to do compromises in terms of uh, latency and uh, lag and buffering and so on, first drop the frame rate and then uh, drop your resolution to 1280 times 720. And same at the output. There we go. I'm fortunate enough to have quite good bandwidth, so I'm going to leave it at 1080p and 60 frames per second and leave this at the default by cubic scaling. But it doesn't really matter because we're not going to do any scaling. Okay, moving on. Output. Uh, first of all, let's go ch check out audio. The default audio bitrate is at 160, and 192 is default for standard MP3. So you can see like, if you want to compare compressions and so on. Uh, and 320 is like high quality MP3. I do the middle ground, go for 256. You can rename your audio tracks. I'll do game, I'll do mic, I'll do my little voice chat, and I will call this one stream. I'm gonna set that to 256 as well. There we go. That is audio settings. Uh, recording was covered in part one, so let's move on to streaming. And this is extremely important. Because, if you remember from the first video, the audio mixer is uh, <laughs> sensitive. Uh, but what it means is that you, you pick which audio track from the mixer that we're going to go through after uh, to broadcast. And that's it. So anything included on track 4 is going to be broadcast. If we go to recording and see it's different, we can check four boxes and that's going to be all the four tracks that we uh, end up with in the uh, video file. But in streaming, we can only pick one stereo track. So I'm leaving these ones unchecked because I also do Let's Plays. And this is going to be my game audio. This is my microphone audio. And this is my voice chat audio. And then I'm going to do a mix down of what I want from these on track four. If I were to use an Elgato, I would probably pick this one for streams. But I don't use it that much. So anyway, we're moving on to encoders. Here we have two different options. The X264 encoder is a software decoder, meaning that the CPU is taking the workload in terms of generating images for your broadcast. The hardware encoder, H264, is much lighter on the CPU because it actually just saves every frame directly from your graphics card. Uh, I would highly recommend, if you do have the option, I really hope you do, to use the H264. Uh, let's go for the X264 because I actually, actually haven't set this up for four streams. Uh, and for streaming service encoder settings, don't really know what it means. Default is checked, I'll leave it checked. Rescale output, why would you want to? Uh, rate control, we want constant bit rate. Constant bit rate, we do not want uh, variable bit rate or uh, whatever the other ones are. We always, always want constant bit rate. YouTube recommends 4,500. If you go much higher than this, uh, YouTube streaming will let you know that, oh, this is, this is quite high, are you sure? We recommend 4,500. Uh, Twitch, I have no idea. Um, and the other services, likewise. Uh, we go for 9,000 because we have the bandwidth and it's been proved to be quite stable 
and so on. Keyframe intervals, we're gonna leave that at two because every time we've left keyframe intervals at zero, OBS has proven difficult. Sometimes it crashes and so, so on. Uh, let's leave all these at standard default and we will definitely not go for variable frame rate. Okay, so let's move on to the H.264, which is what we actually use on our channel. Once again, we want constant bitrate at 9000 and keyframe intervals at 2. Uh, the default preset is default, profile is main, and the level is set to auto, because we don't actually know what they mean. Uh, we've used two pass encoding so that we get slightly higher quality, and once again, these we don't know what it means, but it, it, it works. It works for us. If it doesn't work for you, I'm sorry, but it works for us. Let's go to advanced settings. The Direct 3D uh, driver is what we use for pretty much anything involving games and so on. So let's just keep it on. And we touch none of these. These are all default. Okay, stream delay. If you for some reason want your stream to have 20 seconds delay, you can enable that here, but why would you? I, I wouldn't. Okay, hotkeys. Uh, I have already set up hotkeys for recording. I also want some for streaming, which I will set to Control Alt 6 and Control Alt 7. Now, naturally, I run the risk of starting to record when I'm meant to stream and vice versa, but I don't have F1 through 12 buttons, which you might choose for your stop and start recording. Um, okay. Naturally, you'll also want to set up your stream settings and you're going to have to go to your individual stream providers to see what they are. Uh, naturally, I'm not going to show you my stream key because then all of a sudden you'll be streaming on Lowbrow Gaming and only we are allowed to do that. Now, remember in the streaming section, we have checked that Audio Track 4 is going to be our broadcast. We have reserved these for our Let's Plays. Okay, so very, very, very important. Go to the mixer and then you will see that by default, everything here is checked off. I will uncheck it all so that you can see much easier what it is that I'm doing. There we go. So, uh, I, for my three Let's Play channels, I want my main audio, game audio. I want the mic audio to be number two, and I want my voice chat to be number three. But here is the streaming channel. This is what we're broadcasting, and we want both game and microphone. If you're playing a multiplayer game, then you want to check all three of them, right? But I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna show you in a moment what I am gonna stream. Uh, equally important is this thing, down mix to mono. The default is unchecked, but the microphone, uh, microphones are usually mono and you're broadcasting in stereo. So what's gonna happen if you don't down mix to mono is that your viewers are gonna have your microphone only in the left or right speaker. So to make sure that your beautiful singing voice pops up in both channels, you click down mix to mono. All right, uh, I'm gonna mention that these levels are my Let's Play levels. And uh, the reason I'm not peeking out is that when I edit, I, I don't want everything to be uh, at max volume. Certain games and so on, they go right up to there and I don't like that. So I just knock it down a few decibels. And if I don't like it, I edit that in post and do whatever I want with it. But when it comes to streaming, we don't have the luxury of doing any of that stuff. So I generally knock mine down to negative 12 uh, for the game audio. And then I keep my microphone up to a negative two. Uh, that is pretty much level for me, but you might want to do some testing before you go live. Okay, the last thing we're gonna do with the audio is that when we go into the filters here, because we don't have the option of editing and cleaning everything up in post, and I'm on the AT2020 condenser microphone, I get quite a lot of room noise. So I want some noise suppression to take care of that. And you might've heard that my voice changed a little bit already. Um, the default 20 is a bit high for me. I like to keep it at negative 16 because I don't have that much noise around me while I'm playing. If I crank it down, it sounds like I'm in a tin can pretty much, uh, so it, it suppresses too much. Now what noise suppression actually does is it tries to eliminate the frequencies around the main sound. So if your voice is the main sound, it's gonna try to eliminate uh, the noise in the other frequencies, but the, mo the more you suppress, the more it's gonna remove and it changes the characteristics of your beautiful, beautiful voice. Okay, the other thing I'm gonna add is gain. Gain gives me a bit of compression. It gives me a bit of extra sound so that I, if I lean away from the microphone, uh, it doesn't really matter that much. And if I, uh, uh, 
if I speak a bit lower, it doesn't really ma matter because I, I have a bit of gain. It gives the microphone a bit of oomph. Um, you might have noticed that there's also a noise gate, which I don't actually use, but I'm gonna to explain to you how it works anyway. Uh, there's a close and open threshold. That means that the open threshold, that's when the microphone opens, so to speak. Um, I'm gonna show you now what, uh, what this uh, sound bar or the volume bar looks like uh, without the noise gate and see what silence looks like. All right, so it oscillates around here and you've probably heard a car passing by and stuff like that. Uh, what happens when I turn on the noise gate and then I shut up, that's, th this is gonna happen. See, that's complete silence. So it actually just mutes the microphone under a certain threshold means that I have to be this loud, like negative 16, that's uh, the loudest, since we're on the negative side. So I have to be this loud for it, for the microphone to unmute, and I have to uh, be uh, this quiet for it to close. So if I, um, if I set this very high, uh, uh, okay, I need to be, yeah, see, it cut me off there. I need to be quite loud for it to turn on. Uh, but if I set the close threshold quite low and this is quite loud, ah, uh, uh, what happened there was that uh, I needed to be about this loud for it to turn on, but because this close threshold was low, I could maintain the noise down. It gets a bit advanced, but that's generally how it works. My reason for not using it is that when I did a bit of testing, I noted that uh, my first syllable, if I say like cat, um, the C in cat may have been cut off. I'm hoping it did, just to illustrate my point. Uh, that means that this, this, uh, this variable right here, 25 milliseconds attack time, this is the duration of loudness, this loudness that I need to maintain for the microphone to unmute all right, secondly, and perhaps the most important for those of you who think that a noise gate removes noise, it does not. If you've been playing multiplayer games or you've been watching streams with someone with a very bad microphone or they have a lot of fan noises in their room, uh, when they start speaking, you hear, you hear everything. It does not actually remove the noise. It just says that it needs to be this loud for the microphone to turn off. All the other noise will still be there. So that's what the noise suppression does. Normally a chat uh, software has a noise gate. This is a noise gate right here. Um, I can set that to be automatic or I can set it to uh, move up and down. It's not gonna show where I'm talking right now because I'm not actually in a voice chat. Uh, I don't use the noise gate, so I'll remove it. The noise suppression is set to negative 16 because that's sort of the amount of noise I need to suppress. I hope that makes sense for you. And if you are in a very loud room and you have a lot of traffic passing by and so on and you think that's very annoying, feel free to add the noise gate and uh, fiddle around with that. But I don't use it and I don't need it. All right, let's move on to the fun stuff, which is to set up our scenes and overlays and all that stuff. I actually use four stream scenes and I'm gonna show you why in just a bit. This is gonna be the startup screen. I'm gonna add the overlay without cam because I'm add it, going to add one with cam later on and browse to my overlay no cam which I've made beforehand I'm not going to tell you how because that's a very long Photoshop tutorial and that's not what this video is about anyway we've got the overlay without cam I also want to add a background right, let's see call it static a static background uh, start I'm gonna add this image let's see overlay starting there we go. The stream is about to begin, it says. Uh, this is just the boot up screen for the game. And now I've resized it a bit. The the black side, black bars here is just because I've, I've moved things down to make room for the text and so on. So I'm also going to add a game capture device because I want people to uh, hear the music and stuff from the background uh, while I'm talking and meanwhile telling people that the stream is about to begin. So in the background, Watch Dogs 2 is running add full screen. Um, uh, the window needs to capture a specific window, watchdogs2.executable. That means that every time you're gonna play a different game, you're gonna have to go in here and change it. 
So it needs to match uh, the executable name. We're not going to scale anything. Apparently these are new options. I haven't seen these before. So you can choose whether or not to uh, capture overlays such as Steam and you may choose not to. So if you want to display your achievements, you can capture this, but if you don't want people to see your friends logging on and off, uh, you will disable it. All right, uh, the game capture goes, of course, under the overlay, and we have to res whoop, not resize the overlay. <laughs> Definitely not that. Uh, we need to resize the game capture window to fit snugly. I would rather have an overlap than a gap, but that's just me. You can also use your arrow keys to move things up and down. And feel like that looks about right. Let's just click outside and see whether we can detect any gaps. I can't see any. Okay. That is it for our start screen, almost. Um, because I just mentioned I want people to just hear the music. So I'm going to disable this. And um, yeah, you can't hear the music right now because uh, when I alt tab out of the game, you can't hear it, but go inside the game again. That works. Okay, moving on to the second scene. I'm gonna duplicate this one. I'm gonna call it stream, no cam. All right. So in stream, no cam, it's just gonna be the same thing, but it's not gonna have, um, um, it's not going to have the static start. I'm going to remove this one. I'm going to add a, a different image. I'm going to add it just static. And browse my way to the overlay static. There we go. Overlay static dot PNG. This is the background. There we are. We want the game capture to be visible, but I'm going to add one more layer between these. I'm going to add a text layer and I'm going to call that 404. And my reason for doing that is, let's see, select font. I've downloaded the uh, Watchdogs uh, font. I'm going to increase the size to about 72. I'm going to have, let's see, uh, yeah, that's what I want, is it? And I want to say 404 game, not Found. and I want it to be let's see I want it to be I want it to be green there we are I also want it to be outlined with black okay now I can see that it's a bit smaller than I wanted and this is the annoying bit if I start to resize it here it's just gonna mess up the scaling because it actually scales doesn't retain the vector information so you actually have to go into select font and then type in let's say 200 that might be a bit too big we're about to find out I'm just gonna move that here yeah it's a bit big so let's go double click select font Go 150 instead. Oh yeah, 404, game not found. That's just my standard error message in case something happens during the stream or in case just the game crashes. That way, uh, the game capture layer right here that we've copied from the other one, just made it visible. We have the overlay. In case something happens to the game, it doesn't just go black uh, like this. So instead of having that, I have this. So if the game crashes, boom, 404 game not found. People will know that we have te technical difficulties and you know you have something to read and people will enjoy themselves and talk about it in the chat. Right, so uh, let's duplicate this again and call that stream with cam. Stream with cam. We're gonna do exactly the same thing, all of these, but we're gonna remove overlay without cam I'm going to add a different overlay and the reason for the reason I'm not just double clicking and then changing the image is because if I change that here it changes in all of them so I'm uh, adding a new image I'm going to call that overlay with cam make it visible browse for it and then we have overlay alpha that's just my normal <laughs> naming conventions and that's my overlay that also has a hole for uh, a webcam. So we also need a webcam, right? 
we go to video capture device and we can just call that cam. There we go, and there's my beautiful face. I'm a bit ill, a bit under the weather, and, and you know, not really feeling it, and it's a bit messy around me, but never mind. Uh, I want to customize it and set it to 1280 x 720p because there's no reason for me to use the full HD for any of this. Uh, it can go in 30 frames regardless of uh, the game going out in 60, uh, in 60 frames per second. Right, uh, I'm not going to touch anything else, I just want the cam to show up. And then I want to place it up here, I want to put it under the overlay, and I'm also, for safety's sake, I'm going to right-click it and go to Filters, and under Effects, I think, we have Cropping. So I want to crop just a little bit. I want to crop it on the left. See how much. I'm holding Shift up now. Okay, so I say 400 pixels on the left side, and... Let's do a little bit on the right as well. We'll actually just let's resize it and see what we need to do relative to the cutout. Because you can see it's just transparent. There's nothing, there's no magic about it. This is just one big image layer. And then I'm going to resize my face to fit neatly inside. All right. And I actually want to center it on my chair right there. And there we go, make it as, as small as I can within the boundaries. All right, so this is my seating position while I'm playing Watchdog. I'm gonna tilt my monitor down a bit. The webcam is just sitting on top of the monitor. Well, actually, that works out quite all right. But you can see on the right side here, we need to crop it some more, right? So let's go back into the cam filters, go into the crop and pay attention to the uh, top left here. <laughs> it's pointing to the screen, that's pretty useless for you guys. Let's see, 100 frames? No, no, 100 pixels, I mean. 130, almost, 150, 40, 50, ooh, 1450, 150. Um, yeah, almost not really happy about so sort of the placement of everything so i want to actually move it a bit over here and that well actually i'm quite happy with that i'd say i'm gonna sit over here well, i can move the uh, camera around a bit like that yeah let's just call that call that good enough I'm actually going to rename it and call it main because this is our main window okay i'm actually going to duplicate the no cam one once again and i'm going to call it stream brb okay and what i want to do here is i want to have a different text uh, i actually want to have the same font and so on uh, but i want it to say back in a gif Dot, dot. I'm going to choose hacked again. I'm going to go with the same size, 150 was it? And I want it to be green. And I want it to have an outline. And there we go. And then we put that here. Why didn't it turn green? All right, let's go back in. The font color. There we go. Okay, and the outline should be black, please. Back in a GIF. I'm going to remove the 404 one because uh, if we remove the game now, it's just going to be double text and so on. And back in a GIF sort of says the same, that we're working on something and I'm doing something. So I'm just going to remove the 404. All right, and um, the static we will leave there just in case. Uh, overlay without cam because I'm, not, I'm going to be away from the keyboard. And the backhand GIF is just going to say that, hey, this dude is away from the keyboard and it's going to be back in a GIF. I'm going to increase the outline size because I want to, uh, there you go, five seems about right, just for aesthetic reasons. I'm also going to go back to my main and increase the outline size for the 404 to the same amount. And with the no cam, it should have been changed here as well. 
Yeah, see, now it says five. So now we get to illustrate that point. All right, these are my streaming scenes. The start, no cam, main, and BRB. So one more thing that I have to mention is, once again, be careful about the mixer. We've added the cam, and that means that we've also added lots of checkboxes. Let's uncheck all of them because we don't want the webcam to record any audio for our Let's Plays or our streams, especially not on the same tracks that we're streaming or sending out, okay? The last order of business is to set up hotkeys for these, um, for these scenes, because when I'm in the stream, I don't want to go out of the game and click in OBS to change between them, like so. I want to set up hotkeys so let's go to settings, let's go to the hotkeys, and then uh, there are a lot of options here. And you can set hotkeys for pretty much anything. But you'll notice that all of your different scenes show up. So you can set specific hotkeys for, uh, for your specific scenes as well. What I'm going to do is, um, let's see, stream start, where stream start, switch to scene. I'm going to set that to Alt 1. All right, I'm going to go to the next one I want, which is the no cam, and uh, switch to scene. I think the order isn't really consistent, but that doesn't really matter. Switch to scene 2. And I want my main one to be on number 3, and so on. And then my be right back on, there you go, number 4. Apply. Okay. That way I can just sit right here and I can switch between these scenes just using my keyboard. And then in my other hand, I will have a gamepad or I will be back in a GIF. All right. So I think that concludes the tutorial. Uh, I'm going to leave you with one more tip. As you can see, it's, it's a bit dark in my face. So right over there, almost behind the monitor, I put up a, a, a lamp to just shine me straight in the face. Uh, when I do my streams. So I hope this helps. I hope you'll uh, create some nice content. I hope you'll, if you like this tutorial, that you'll click like and subscribe to us so that you can watch some of our Let's Plays and streams as well. And I'll see you guys around. Bye.